Hello subscribers and guests of the channel. In this video, we will touch upon the topic of electorate microphones, and armed with knowledge, we will make a lapel microphone, devoid of the known drawback. So, an electorate microphone is a microphone that has a membrane made of an electorate, a dielectric that can generate an electric field for a long time. The membrane is fixed on a metal ring that connects to the aluminum body of the capsule. The thickness of the gasket between the membrane and the metal base is only 40 microns. The base is connected to the shutter of the transistor, which coordinates the high resistance of the microphone with the low resistance of the recorder. But the power supply is required for the transistor to work. And it's fed to the microphone through the microphone jack. Power to the drain of the transistor is supplied through a resistor, which is the load of this gain stage. The useful signal from the load is removed through the separating capacitor and fed to the microphone amplifier. The vast majority of all microphone sockets in household appliances are designed to use electric microphones. Especially for those who send me to AliExpress in the comments, I bought this $3 lapel microphone to show how useless Chinese goods can be. As you can see, at the back of this microphone there is a mesh that simulates the additional acoustic input of the microphone. Such inputs form the radiation pattern and amplitude frequency response in more complex microphones. That's just for such an acoustic design, the appropriate dimensions of the microphone itself are also required. But if we analyze this Chinese microphone, we will see that inside there is a very ordinary 6M capsule of an electric microphone. That is, if a 10mm capsule were installed in this buttonhole, the membrane area would double, which would improve the signal-to-noise ratio. And this is despite the fact that the cost of both capsules is only 4 cents. If you connect this microphone to the recorder, you will get an increased level of hum induced by the mains and switching power supplies. Even if you connect this microphone to your phone on the street, it will still give a hum, since the phone is also a source of electromagnetic radiation. And this happens because the Chinese fundamentally do not use shielded cable in budget microphones. Well, this is logical. Who will buy these electric microphones for $50 if they work exactly the same as $3 microphones? After all, in the cases of these microphones are installed the same 6mm microphone capsules at a price of 4 cents. I think after what you've seen, making a handmade lavalier microphone won't seem like a futile exercise anymore. These are the components we will need for a project that will save us $50. If you already have all this, you can make a microphone body from the cylinder of a 2-gram syringe. The most important thing of course is not to forget to pass the cable through the microphone body and the plug housing. I always use angled jack to reduce the load on the recorder socket. And this mounting hook I made from a bicycle spoke. If you remove the insulation with a soldering iron, the risk of damaging the wires will be reduced. But to do so, the soldering iron tip must have a sharp edge. You can secure the cable to the microphone body with a knot. We solder the cable braid to the capsule body and the signal wire to the transistor drain. The microphone capsule can now be inserted into our handmade housing. And you can use a paper clip to replace the microphone capsule. Now let's determine the pinout of the microphone input in your recorder. Use a voltmeter to find a voltage close to 2.7 volts in the socket. When measuring, the plus voltage was on pin 4 of the connector and the minus voltage was on pin 3. So, I have to solder the cable braid to the third lead. You can orient yourself with the most popular plug pinouts. If silicone sealant is used when assembling the plug, the jack can be disassembled if necessary. Use a thick polymer adhesive for a more secure assembly. One of the levers of the binder clip we need to bend so that it locks the microphone body in place. 
And finally, our loop mic is almost ready. All we need to do is to clip the microphone on the binder clip and test our new device. And rest assured, our microphone will perform just as well as a $50 one. To ensure that the stock app's auto gain control does not affect your sound recording, you can use an alternative smartphone app and adjust the recording level manually, just like real sound engineers do. Support the channel by subscribing if you like the video. See you on the channel.